This is called, um, originally, it's an avatar based on the games of Final Fantasy. If you remember it, it's a, it's a Tonberry, but I call it a Torberry. And it's a scary creature because it has this cloud of darkness and it has a knife. So I went up to this door and I thought, wouldn't it be frightening if someone was going to come in? And in Second Life, we can do that. We can use the camera. We can stage different sorts of scenes. We can film it and play it back and edit it in so many ways. And you may have seen recently, if you haven't, I will give you more information on this later. So this here is a picture of the first life, totally. <laughs> this is what I look like when I'm smiling and working behind the scenes. This, what I hold in my hand, is a space navigator. As Second Life evolves, so does the technology used to control it. I know some people find that a mouse in a keyboard is awkward, and I do agree. As technology gets more popular, and yeah, Susie, I need to find out about that. I thought it should already be Mac compatible, but unfortunately I've heard some things, some bugs, so that will hopefully be better in the future. But this, what I hold, is a 3D mouse. So we have devices that are getting cheaper that allow us to control Second Life more natural. And so far, the Space Navigator, it is wonderful for doing smooth camera controls in Second Life. It's very funny because a long time ago, one of my coworkers, Runite Linden, he's a graphics guru, he made this secret feature in the advanced menu called the debug menu then. It was called the fly cam, and it's specifically used to make your camera a lot smoother when it pans around scenes, when you zoom through buildings. It's great for movies, but of course it was hidden. And until now, it was just recently brought out in our new release candidate viewer, kind of a sneak peek of the future. And if you have a space navigator, it costs maybe 40 to $60 US. Yes, dolly shots and uh, tracking down the rails, like Susie mentioned, and to uh, come up with things, shots that are less jerky. So I actually have one of these. I made video tutorials about it, showing how it can be used. And as time goes on, more movies using this are going to be made. And let me show you a still picture here. Uh, do, do, do. <laughs> yeah, Susie, that's the funny thing with world economy. So let's see here. This is a very cool picture of the background art. Now, Second Life being a creative expression for art, this had no post-processing. The art in here was made by a resident of Second Life. There's some pictures of it on my Flickr stream. I should give their address for that later. And he made this cool thing in space, and I just turned the lights down, and I began to use the space navigator to turn myself upside down, because if there's something strange, you may have noticed that a lot of pictures of Second Life have a level plane, but I like to see things when they're upside down. It makes you go, whoa! <laughs> Oh, and uh, uh, Verlanus, I think that's actually something sort of different. If Flycam's not on, I know that we added new controls in preferences input in camera. There's new sliders in there to adjust the camera springiness and other levels. So that might be what's causing it instead. That, those sliders, there's three sliders now instead of, I think, the current one. And they can be useful, but I, I would recommend looking in that in the release candidate. Yeah, and I'll answer more questions after this. So right now I'm going to show you another movie and this happens to be one of my video tutorials teaching new and older residents how to use the world map and to show how big Second Life is. Here we go. It may be a foggy day out, yet I enjoy helping you find your way around Second Life. So let's have a look at the world map. Click it to open the world map and here we go. You'll notice right up here there's two tabs, Objects and Terrain. Objects shows all the resident created amazing stuff in world and terrain is just sort of a naked view where it's just the land masses. And give it a while, it can take a while to load the map. It's really taking a while, there we go. And as you see it's more bare, ah, our logo back to objects and objects shows what's below 400 meters so if you have a really high skybox it's not going to show up you can click and drag to zoom you can also use your mouse's scroll wheel if you got one and this here is the legend you and it shows which direction you're oriented and the cone of vision home my home is in Grasmere and this will teleport you home you can toggle to show and hide various things like classifieds oh that doesn't work I remember that should be removed person is all the green dots of the residents avatars in Second Life Info Hub is the mainland welcome areas. Telehub, I almost always keep off. Actually, I always do because it looks so cluttered. Ah, 
No point to keeping that on, really. Not going to tell you much new information. Data visualization, friends. In addition, you can see your friends who are online. You can teleport over to them by selecting their name. If you want to do... Hey, Jesse, where she's at. <laughs> My landmark shows your list of landmarks. I really should clean that up. Oh, okay, and you can select a region to search for it. If I type in sandbox, for example, show all the regions and begin with the word sandbox. And then once you picked one, you can go ahead and teleport. And copy slow to clipboard. I have a more advanced tutorial on this. Go ahead and look for it. I'm going to go ahead now and use the roadmap to travel. <laughs> Ah, uh, there we go. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And now, for my final appearance here, I'm going to transform back into a man wearing a white tuxedo. <laughs> because that is classy, and I've got a briefcase because I'm professional, and I have my keyboard on my back. And like I said before, all these props in Second Life you can attach, you can detach them. And the final slide I'm going to show here is my editing screen. This is exactly what it looks like when I am making a movie. Let's see here. Come on, load, load, load. <laughs> it's been so much fun sharing this with you. So this, I will explain briefly. This is Sony Vegas. And I consider capturing raw footage to be of the utmost important because if you have a lot of raw footage, whatever it is in Second Life, you can always put it together later. You can assemble your memories, whether it's a home movie or it's going to be something more, you feel more polished. But whatever it is, it's a form of self-expression, sharing Second Life with the outside world. Because with YouTube, even Flickr has video, you can make movies in Second Life and share them with the outside world. And people get curious about Second Life. Like, what's going on in there? Who are those strange looking creatures? And right here you can see that as I fly up to the screen, let me go, woohoo, it's a big screen. So this is a frame from the movie. You can see this is the, my the tutorial, and this is another avatar of mine that is kind of like the Loch Ness Monster. It was made by the Grendos children people in the world. They make a lot of mythological, a lot of fantastic creatures, and then their best friends. You can see there's the water reflections. It's a lot more realistic now that we have water reflections. On the left hand side are all these fancy schmancy movie effects. I can do masking, which means I can block up part of a scene to frame it. I can add vignettes. I can make it look very cool with gradients. I can add a lot of color. Up here, <laughs> I've never done this before. This is a lot of fun. This is the timeline and it controls all the events that happen in sequence, when I want to chop up events, when I want to put them in, put one clip in front of another, like right up here, this pink blotch. It might be kind of hard for you to see and move your camera, but just trust what I'm saying, that everything is moving forward here, and then this is going back in the timeline, and when I play it, it plays the movie. And then after I'm all done that, I render it. And so, yeah, to uh, answer a frequently asked question I get a lot, I don't pre-script stuff most of the time. I have a few ideas. <laughs> I just have such a lush, fun time. <laughs> yeah, Robbie, because I, I could use prims too. That's what we can do, right? I know some presentation people, they, they create a prim, they res it. And of course, Philip, Philip Rosedale, Philip Lynn, he's such a big inspiration to me before I ever came into Second Life. I actually came into Second Life after I was very depressed with my first life. I was in a bad time. I had personal tragedies happening. And then I found out about Second Life. I thought, hey, this is cool. I'll spend a lot of time here. So I could use, I guess I could make it glow. We can combine all this stuff. Yeah. You know, if you wear skirts, be careful too, because with camera controls, we can look underneath ourselves. I could, you know, I could change various things. But all in all, yep, yeah, that's how it goes in Second Life. And right now, professional wise, as Trolley Linden, my main focus is helping residents of Second Life have more fun with it. I'm an evangelist in that I communicate the joy of Second Life. And a lot of work I do is with video tutorials and, of course, machinima. So thank you so much for uh, having me. And uh, yeah, back over to you, Hano. I'm glad you're all here today. Thank you. <laughs> thank you graciously. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a million. That was really fabulous.